All right, so uh, I was gonna talk about getting started with testing. So I've got a long history of testing, so I've been a professional software developer for about 10 years now, and actually very early on, I got introduced to TDD, and I've pretty much done it ever since. So test-driven development. So what is test-driven development? Well, first of all, it's the write a test, watch it fail, make it pass, refactor, start again. Nice and easy, except it's really hard. So, how do you get started with this? Well, first of all, actually, you write a test, you watch it fail, you make it pass, and you refactor and you start again. You're gonna get it horribly wrong. That's okay. Some of the worst tests I've ever seen were people just learning how to do this cycle. And that's okay, because they started doing it. And even though those tests were bad, they learned it. They learned that there can be a bad test. There can be a good test. And you have to kind of go through this and just kind of take that first plunge, step in, and start writing tests. So how can you do this with Puppet? Well, we've got this stuff called RSpec Puppet, not actually by Puppet Labs, but a lot of people use it, and it's great, and it works. Um, there's also just uh, using stuff like Vagrant, um, spinning up boxes and trying it out yourself. There's a lot of things out there for trying out testing. And I will tell you, you're going to start. You're going to have no idea of what to actually test. And that's okay, because you want to just test something. The hardest thing is actually just getting it going. And then once you get it going, you'll start finding out, well, that was kind of interesting, or that was pretty useless. But everyone says that this stuff is so useful, so I'm going to try again. You just got to be persistent at it. And one of the things you start learning, and this is the test-driven side of test-driven development, is that the tests start telling you something about what you're writing. You start getting a better idea of what are the true capabilities of the system you're putting together. What are the capabilities? So, I've always had a problem with the word test. Well, not always. When I first started it, I thought, wow, tests are great. I've had a problem with the word test for the past several years, where I realized that the word test leads, leads people astray. So, when you hear test, when people are talking about testing, you think that you're trying to prove something about your system. You're trying to prove correctness of your system in some manner. You're not. Forget that. This is the whole thing, if you know Dijkstra, Edward Dijkstra, he said, you cannot test for correctness. You can only test for the absence of certain things or the presence of a particular bug, but you can't test for the absence of bugs. So if you go into this thinking, I'm doing testing because I'm proving correctness, you're always going to be disappointed and you're going to write tests that are completely unmaintainable. So what are you trying to do? Well, the what you're trying to do, and this is why it takes a bit of practice and understanding a bit and a lot of reflection. So if you ever work on a team that does what he was talking about, six thinking hats and iterations and getting better at it, that is wonderful, because you get to actually go through this process quickly enough that you actually learn <coughs> something. But so what are you trying to do with these, these things that are called tests? I really prefer the term executable specifications. I'm not trying to prove what it's doing. I'm trying to tell myself and tell anyone else who's going to read this in the future later on, which could be myself, because in six months' time, I'm not the same person. I'm trying to tell myself, what did I expect this thing to be doing for me? So there's always two or three portions of a test. There's always a title of the test. And that title should explain, in plain language, what is this behavior I'm looking for? It might say a little bit about the situation that I'm, I'm looking at in this case, but it's really I'm looking for a particular behavior. And then the other part of the test is actually the test itself. And in some ways, you could say that that thing itself is a little less important than the description of what it is you're looking for. Now, that doesn't mean you write it this really bad code, indecipherable. In fact, you actually have to hold it to just the same quality standards as you hold the rest of your code. So your tests have to be very clear, very specific about what they're doing, but there's these two sides of it. There's the, this is what I'm looking for, and this is how you can get it to do that and tell if it's actually worked. So inside a test, then you have this thing that you often split up into, you say given, when, then. You say, Given I was able to achieve a certain starting state, say that I was able to boot up a Red Hat machine and it already had these things installed. When I, when I apply this puppet manifest, 
then I have a WordPress site that has an index page that I can send access from at this URL. And what would this test be called? This test might be uh, said, say something about um, provisions WordPress on Red Hat. Now, I didn't prove that this always works, but that's fine. I proved that in the situation that I'm thinking about, in the case that I care about right now, it is pretty much achieving that goal. Now, the way this starts fleshing out into much more confidence about what's really going on, I'm holding myself to five minutes, I just, uh -oh. <laughs> Sorry. Turned <laughs> off. <laughs> oh, I'm over. <laughs> so I'll leave you with that. Uh, <laughs> Ineffective. I love talking about this, so come and grab me later.